After all these if statements, which are extremely important, which is why I spend so much time on them, because you will basically need them in any program you write. So after the if statements, it's now time to come to another very important construct in JavaScript and in actually any programming language. And that would be loops. In programming, you often have the scenario that you need to execute certain code multiple times. Now you might think, okay, we have functions for that. We can have reusable code in there. We can call a function multiple times. Sure, but in your code, you have to write every function execution, right? Of course, you can attach a function to an event listener and then whenever that button, for example, is clicked, the function executes. But if you want to control that a certain snippet of code runs for every item you have in an array or runs 10 times, then you would have to put 10 function executions, for example, into your code. And loops allow you to write such code repetition in a more dynamic and flexible way. Now in JavaScript, we have four main loops and that's the for loop, the for off loop, the for in loop and the while loop. And for the while loop, we also have one uh, variation, which I'll also show you. Now, what's the idea behind each of these loops and when do you use them? The for loop together with the while loop is the oldest loop. It's been in JavaScript forever. And the for loop allows you to execute code a certain amount of times. And you use a counter variable for that, which you typically increment or change with every loop iteration. So that means that with a for loop, you can easily define that a certain part of your code should run 10 times, 20 times, a million times. Here's an example. This is how a for loop looks like. You have the for keyword, then between parentheses you initialize or you set up that loop. And that consists of three parts. Uh, begin phase where you initialize variables you can use inside of that loop. So between these curly braces, and that's important, the variables set up there are really only available inside of the loop. Then we also have separated by a semicolon, so not by a comma, not by a colon, but a semicolon. We have a condition, an exit condition, which basically defines when we stop executing that code between the curly braces. And then we have separated by another semicolon, the code that should run after every loop iteration. And there you could do whatever you want, but typically you just change that variable which you initialized and which you also use in your exit condition. So this loop, for example, would initialize i and i is a name which is often chosen. It stands for iterator. So you choose i and you set it to zero initially, then after every loop iteration. So after this console log body ran, it's incremented by one. And then before the next loop iteration, for before every loop iteration actually, this condition i smaller 3 is checked and the loop body is only executed if that condition yields true. Which of course means that in this example here, we would print the values 0, 1 and 2, but never 3 because after the third loop iteration, i gets incremented to 3. Before the next iteration, this condition checks if i is smaller than 3, which of course is not the case if i is equal to 3, and therefore it would stop executing that and move to the next line of code after that for loop. That's how a for loop works. And of course, needless to say, we'll see that in action right after this lecture. Now, another loop you have, which is a bit newer, but now also very well supported in JavaScript, and that's the for off loop. Now, that executes for every element in an array. It allows you to execute code for every element in an array. It looks like this, kind of like the first for loop, but a bit different. Between parentheses, we don't have these three parts. Instead here, we have the off keyword and we create a constant. Could also be a variable, but typically you create a constant which gives you access to one element of the array at a time. And then this body between the curly braces is executed for every element in the array. And L in this case then refers to that element in the array for this current iteration. And this is convenient for, for example, doing something with every element in the array or outputting it to the console or whatever you wanna do. Now, for off helps you with arrays. We also have for in, and that allows you to execute code for every key in an object. 
this is how it looks like. And there we basically have the same syntax as in a for off loop, but with the in keyword instead of the off keyword. And an important difference is that for off is built to work with arrays, for in is built to work with objects. And there you get access to every key in the object. So that's the part on the left side of the colon when you create these key value pairs in objects. And then this second line you see here, console log object square brackets key. That's actually a syntax we haven't used before. This is a way of dynamically accessing key value pairs in an object when you don't have the key name, but instead you have a variable or a constant that holds the key name. Then this gives you dynamic access to the value stored for that key in the object. And of course, we'll also see that in action in this module. Now, last but not least, we have the while loop. The idea behind the while loop is that you execute code as long as a certain condition is true. And only if that condition is somehow set to false, you exit out of the loop. It looks like this. The idea here basically is that you don't really work with a counter, though you could also do that here if you check the counter in your condition, but that you maybe have some Boolean which you then change at some point of time inside of your while loop and you continue executing code until this is done. So these are the different loops. Let's now have a look at them and see how we can integrate them into our project or generally work with them.